Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to my channel learn with fun by Zarar sir. Today we will be discussing a very important topic which we have already discussed in previous lecture. We have solved a problem in AC circuit. Now I have selected a problem uh, which has a different approach. Uh, I would not say different approach but there are few things that need to be understand. So it's a complex problem okay and there are few things which can be easily understandable such as I will be calculating the, the uh, total current in the circuit, power consumed and power factor. So there are three important part in this problem. Okay. To begin with the problem, it is similar to previous problem. So as you can see, I have two inductance. Let's name this L1 and L2 and one capacitor. So whenever you see inductor and capacitor, just begins with your XL formula. So XL1 for first inductor, it is 2 pi. I won't write the formula again. FL. F is 50. Frequency is 50. And inductance value is 0 0.01. So the total inductive reactance turn out to be 3.14 ohm. Okay. So this is one. This is what my XL1 is. Similarly, my XL2 will be 2 pi F. F is frequency which is 50 hertz. L is 0 0.02. So the total XL2 is 6.28. It is ohm. Now, once you get XL1 and XL2, you will get XC. And the formula is similar. 1 upon 2 pi FC. To avoid the space, I will use FC as F frequency is 50 hertz. And C here over here is 200 microfarad, which is 10 to minus 6. And this turned out to be, once you solve this, you will get the value as 15.92 ohm. I have, I have got the XL1, XL2 and XC. Once you got XL1, XL2 and XC, you know the step. You have to calculate or you have to find out the reactance, right guys? Once you get the reactance, you have to calculate the impedance. So we will be calculating impedance. Now how to calculate impedance? This is our network of first Z1. Okay, this is our Z2 and this is our Z3. So there are three impedances which I can see Z1, Z2 and Z3. So my Z1 will be 6 plus J 3.14 ohm, right? Similarly, my Z2 will be 4 plus C you can see resistance is 4 plus L2 you won't write 0 0.02 you have already calculated for 0 0.02 XL2 it is 6.28 6.28 ohm and Z3 is equal to 2 but here it is capacitor so you will write minus J 15.92 now guys you have to convert this rectangular form into polar form. So in complex thing, complex equation, we have two form rectangular and polar. So this is in rectangular form. Let's or Cartesian form. Let's convert it into polar form. So how to convert it into polar form? We have already discussed this under root of a square plus b square and angle is tan inverse of b by a. So once you solve this, you will get the value of Z1 as 6.77. Okay angle 27.62 degree and the resistance is the unit of impedance is ohm similarly for z2 you will write or you will calculate and get 7.48 sorry my mistake 7.48 angle 57.5 degree okay you can use a calculator also if you have scientific calculator so this is a very simple way Okay, and the final one is 16.04 angle minus 82.83 ohm. So you have calculated Z1, Z2 and Z3. Now, now the part is very important. I have to calculate the total current. So the total current I will be V equal to IR. So R equal to V by I, right? R equal to V equal to I R. So if I need I, it would be V by 
R. So V by impedance. Now I have to calculate the total impedance in the circuit. So now total impedance is just to make you understand. This is my Z1. Okay. And there are two parallel resistance Z2 and Z3. Right guys. So I have Z1, Z2 and Z3. Now this two are parallel and this is series. So how I should write my total Z. This is very important. Z1 plus these two are parallel. So we know how to write parallel. Z2 into Z3 upon Z2 plus Z3. So to write parallel it is R2 into R3 upon R2 plus R3. You know the parallel way to write it. Right? Now, now let's calculate Z. Okay. Now my Z1 is over here. 6.77. 6.77 angle 27.62 so this is my z1 plus what is my z2 and z3 this is my z2 and z3 right 7.48 angle 57.5 okay and the second one is 16.04 angle minus 82.83 divided by 7.48 sorry 7.48 angle 57.5 plus 16.04 angle 82.83 okay i will write minus over here okay so now I'll say I'll give you some important way or important thing to remember and I request you that you should not forget this. Okay, for that I'll wipe out the stuff over here so that I'll, I can write it down over here also. Okay, and this is very 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 important guys. Okay, what I'm writing over here is remember once you are adding or subtracting in complex it should be in rectangular form and if you are trying to multiply or divide it should be in polar form okay to add or subtract rectangular multiply or divide polar now see my final z equal to so this won't be changed right 6.77 angle 27.62 okay we'll try to solve for small small part see these two are multiplying right as you can see this two term this term and this term are getting multiply and if you are multiplying or something you should have polar form so they are in polar form you can directly multiply so if you multiply 7.48 with 16.04 you will get 119.57 okay so you will get 119.57 an angle in it uh, when you multiply or divide just remember if you are multiplying angle should be added and if you are dividing angle should be subtracted so 57.5 plus minus 8.82.83 so it would be minus 25.3 okay just a basic addition if it is divide you have to subtract now this is another important part this two are getting added so once this two are getting added remember to add or subtract they should be in rectangular form so you have to convert this back into rectangular don't convert it because you have already aware about the rectangular form of this point is over here 4 and see this one for this rectangular part is 4 point j and for this rectangular part so just add it 4 plus 2 what is 4 plus 2 it is 6 okay and uh, what is 6.28 uh, minus this and once you add this 2 the final value which you will get it would be in rectangular form then convert back into polar form so the if you convert back into polar form after addition it would be 11.35 angle minus 58.1 degree now my z see calculation is little bit tedious part over here but if you remember this now you won't make mistake okay angle 27.62 remember this means for rectangular and polar concept now see it is dividing right this two term are divide and you know the concept to divide 
it should be in polar form they are already in polar form just directly divide this by this so once you divide this by this you will get the value as 10.53 an angle angle should be subtracted so minus 25.3 minus minus 58 so it would be plus so you'll get angle 32.8 okay now see both are in polar form and we know in polar form we cannot add or subtract so we have to convert back into rectangular form see we have to add right so to add we have to convert it into back into rectangular form and you don't need to convert this because you have already done this okay it is 6.6 .6 plus j 3.14 plus this now you have to convert and once you convert this you will get 8.86 plus j 5.71 now just equate real with real and imaginary with imaginary 6 plus 8.86 will be 14.86 okay and 3.14 plus 5.8 it turns out to be approximately 8.85 okay not approximately i have already calculated 8.85 okay now this is in which form rectangular for uh, our reference will always keep both the form so the total impedance in the network now this z is total impedance see this z we have already cal we are trying to calculate this is total impedance we are trying to calculate right so the total impedance in the network is what is the total impedance network 17.29 angle 17.29 angle 30.77 degree ohm this is my total uh, impedance now do I have value of total voltage? Yes, it is 100. Total impedance is this. Now, can we calculate the current? It's very simple. The formula is, what is the formula? V equal to IR, right guys? Just uh, let me go to next slide. Uh, just a second. Okay, now we have already got Z. The Z we have got is 17.29 and the angle that we have got is 30.77. Right? This is my total Z. Now to calculate total current, V equal to IR, I equal to V by Z. V we have given 100, angle to be taken as 0 because it is not provided. And Z you have already calculated in the circuit 17.29, angle is 30.77. Both are in polar form. So if both are in polar form, you just need to divide this by this. So 100 divided by 17.29, you have to do it uh, cal by calculator or you can use it manually. So you'll get 5.78 angle. Now for angle, just remember for divide, we have to subtract. So 0 minus 30.79, it is minus 30.77. Okay, we have got the value of I as well. Now this is, uh, there is one more thing written in the question, if you can remember. We have to calculate the power consumed, right? The power consumed. The power is V. Power is the formula is V i cos phi, where phi is an angle. So V it is 100, right? I it is 5.78. So you'll write 100 into V is 100. I is 5.78. So 5.78 into cos phi which is minus 30.77 and you are aware about cos of minus theta is cos theta so you don't need to write this minus as well and the power comes out to be 496.9 watt this is the total power which is unit there is one more thing written if you can remember power factor the power factor formula is nothing but just cos phi so basically this is only our power factor so cos phi so it would be again cos 30.77 why i'm not writing minus because you know cos of minus theta is cos theta so cos 30.77 so it is 0.866 okay i have i'm writing one more thing over here lagging now we have already discussed this is interesting where i'm ending the lecture why i have kept lagging over here we have already discussed in capacitive and resistive circuit lead lag, lead 
lead and lag network thank you guys i try to complete this problem within 15 minutes hope you understand the concept uh, i would suggest and i would request do subscribe and share thank you guys have a good day that's it